and welcome to Caravan Escapades. I hope everybody's keeping safe and well. So this is our third and final vlog of our trip to France. This is our tour north or our journey north. Um, we recently left the Champs Blanc um, and we're heading north now. Now uh, we don't know where we're going to end up, we don't know how far we're going to drive. Um, but why not come along for the journey and see what we get up to. to grab some breakfast um, so we're parked here and you may think oh why they park like that well the strange thing is with some of these airs they will indicate an area to go to for caravans and motorhomes um, and you get part way along and then it just disappears um, there's no sign of where you should be there's no sign of where you should park you also find you have to be careful oh, I think Oh well, I'll move it then. Claire's just found where the lorries are and stuff. Yeah, it's over there. So I'll go. I'll go and move it. So I'll move it. Yeah. So I'm still not sure whether I've managed to park in the right place. Anyway, um, there's a motorhome service point here. I kind of think it might be. This is the area designated for caravans and motorhomes, and literally there's about three slots. Um, you know, it is a new clean air, it's a kind of nice air, but just the caravan and motor homing, um, it's just very, very confusing. I think hence why you get stuff like you've got over there, but we're in, we've got somewhere to park. As I say, these are, that's your motor home service point, I think this is a spot for caravans. Uh, there's a van there parked, you find that quite often, where you just get a van parked in sort of a caravan slot, that sort of stuff. But I suppose it's the same as we get in the UK. So one thing I just wanted to mention, which I probably forgot to mention, is actually when we leave the caravan, we do put the locks on. Um, I've literally just taken off the wheel lock as well. And we generally try and leave it where possible, where we can see it. And if it looks too risky or too dodgy, we just stay with the caravan and one of us goes anyway. But we do put locks on when in the airs. So one of the amazing bits along this route that we're heading north now is the viaduct at Milau, uh, the Milau viaduct. We did stop over in Milau and come across uh, on the viaduct uh, back in 2019. So before I was vlogging, so we didn't, uh, uh, you know, we didn't video any of it or anything else like that. But we did come down that way purposely to take in the viaduct. And we're fortunate enough the way we're going back today, um, we're going to be able to do it again. So, uh, yeah, see what you think. So this is the viaduct air, definitely worth a stop over if you are coming this way. There is a viewing platform at the top there and we'll take you up there and have a look. But a bit of an exhibition here, uh, as well as a nice, or from what we remember, nice restaurant, that sort of thing. So we're going to go in and get something to eat. And you can see us parked in the air. Well, I think we're probably about 70 miles north of where we were uh, it is a bit windy and I tell you it's got a bit colder as well we've had to put our fleeces on if you do stop at the museum there is uh, sorry if you do stop at the air there is quite an interesting kind of museum exhibition um, of the vibe of the construction that sort of stuff so definitely worth checking out so there is a viewing area just up from the air, um, it's about 500 metres walk but it is quite a steep climb so if you do want to kind of 
wander up, make sure it's a steep climb, but I tell you what, it's worth it when you get here, just to be able to see this. Never ceases to amaze me. We've been, this is the second time we've been here. And it just never ever ceases to amaze me. And down there in the valley is Milau. And there's a beautiful, beautiful little town is Milau. We've been there before. We've stopped in a little caravan site. But there is the one and only, very impressive Milau Viaduct. Well worth a stop if you get the chance. So we're just walking back down from the viewing area for the viaduct and here is the air. Um, the air's down there. Again, it's a great little air. And you can see our caravan is all the way over there. So we're going to wander back and hit the road. So we're 255 miles um, north of our last camping site, which was um, Camp de Chambre Blancs. Um, and we are now... Um, we use the Axi app, hang on, let me get the name of the place we are. It's one of those weird names that I'm not going to get right. We are at Camping Saint, or Camping Saint Pure Cain Cecil. Camping Saint Pure Cain Cecil. Anyway, I'll put links to that down below. Anyway, um, so that's where we are. Uh, strangely enough, this wasn't the one we selected. So I got on the Axi app as I do normally, um, selected an app or selected a site sorry gave them a bell phone them up have you got any vacancies yes we have right we'll see you soon basically went back onto the app click directions um and it brought us to this site which was uh, very close to where we currently were at the time anyway um they knew nothing about the phone call that i'd made um but thankfully they had some space anyway so hopefully the other site is still not expecting us they realize that we're not turning up um but we're here so it's not too bad not too bad at all little sort of wooded site um is just purely for sort of one night um here's our spot here um so the girls are in there just getting straight and i think we'll go and we'll go and find something to eat so what's the name of the town we're in here's another one of my absolutely rubbish french pronunciations we are um saint puricane Cecile. oh same as the campsite so we are in saint puricane Pur Porcain Sissou. Anyway, that's how I pronounce it. So that's us. This is where we are. Um, and I'll probably give you a quick look around the shower block, that sort of stuff later on. One little downside we have just found with the pitch, and I don't think I'll point it out to you or show you anyway, because I'm sure you don't want to do that. But there's two or three piles of dog poo. Um, so there's obviously some dog owners not been cleaning up after themselves. Um, so that's a bit of a disappointment with the pitch, but uh, yeah. So just walking around the campsite, uh, there are also some kind of mini cabins here. Um, I think there's about half a dozen of them, so I'm sure they rented as well. Um, there seems to be a mix of tourers and probably what we would call back in the UK seasonal pitches. So we're just, we're just going to take a wander actually into the town because it's quite close. So just over on my left here is the um, campsite reception, there's a little shop, that sort of thing in there. Uh, a few little sort of tables and chairs but what looks like quite limited food and then there's kind of like the main municipal park over there there's some crazy golf and that sort of thing and the entrance to the campsite is just up here uh, a few picnic tables that sort of thing I think these are kind of for general public use rather than just the campsite so we've just walked a little bit into the town um, and it's mainly based on uh, it's situated on the river um, I'm not really sure which way to go just yet. This seems to be the main street of the town. So this looks like the town square.
So we seem to have walked into the centre of the town. Strange things happening here. I don't know whether you can see it up there. There's that speaker there, and there are several other speakers dotted around the town. And they're all playing music, like pop music. So you've kind of got pop music, and they've literally just come on um, probably about two or three minutes ago. I've not seen that before. So we'll give you a quick look around the facilities. Um, obviously we've got the female on that side, we've got the male on this side, with surprisingly disabled male and female in the same one, but that's the way it goes. So just before we go in there, let's give you a quick kind of walk around of what we discovered. Notice boards over the back here. Um, we've got uh, laundry washing laundry tokens uh, that sort of stuff and i think just service door here and we've got sink washing those sorts of things here the elson point um is actually located at the entrance to the site uh, which is a little bit strange so uh, it's right out in the open so we'll have to go and empty the toilet down there shortly and then we'll just take it into the bathrooms Show you what's here. So these are your urinals, obviously your normal toilets. So you've got two normal toilets, no seats is normal. Um, and then you've got your classic long drop. We all like to see that. And one more toilet with a seat, might add. Um, so there's all the mirrors, disabled shower, uh, normal shower. And that sort of stuff so you know all in all the facilities aren't too bad they're clean maybe a little bit tired and worn but there we go so just come back from doing my ablutions uh, yeah quite pleasant to be fair uh water took a little bit of time to come through warm but once it had come through absolutely fine pressure was good so yeah i feel nice and refreshed and ready for the day's traveling So one of the things we've not mentioned a great deal about while uh, while travelling down France and on the way back up that actually Claire has been doing quite a bit of the driving. She's actually shared a lot of the driving with me uh, and done quite a bit of a chunk. She actually quite enjoys it. Um, she loves doing it. Wind, wind the window down. Claire, Claire, wind, wind the window down. You enjoy doing some of the driving, don't you? So yeah, no, she's enjoyed doing the driving. Um, it certainly helped me out and I've enjoyed it. So yeah. Oh, there's Dawson here in the back. Uh, uh, whoa, hang on. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, wait for me. Wait for me. Wait for me. Oh my God, she's gone without me. Wait. Blimey, <laughs> you know I've like made me run. <laughs> We're in the car. Go on then, Claire, you can do the next bit of the driving. But no, it's been a big, massive help having Claire share some of the driving. It's meant that I've been able to relax a bit more, not be so tired, that sort of stuff. So uh, since they've changed the rules, it's been a big, big help that Claire can enjoy. So after managing to get back in the car <laughs> after Claire drove off without me, we've arrived at our next stop. Uh, we've been here before actually last year. 
Camping des Four Vents, uh, I think, which is ca or caravanning des Four Vents, caravanning of the Four Winds. Um, it's quite busy here at the moment. There's a few people uh, booking in and checking in. Um, we're actually here for two nights because what we've decided to do is we're going to go back to Disney. So we're going to go and have a day at Disney tomorrow. We've got enough time. We've motored a little bit further up. So we've got a little bit further up the country to give us that extra day. Um, so yeah, so we booked some last minute park tickets and we're off to Disney tomorrow. So Des Four Vents really is a great site. We enjoy the site here. Maybe we should think about stopping here for longer rather than just a couple of nights. I mean, the pitches here are huge. Um, you know, you can see it there. That's us and we haven't even tried. It goes further back than that. I mean, they really are great sized pitches. There's our next door neighbor's pitch. Um, so you could get plenty on there. We could get big awning up, all sorts of stuff. Nice and green, all that sort of stuff. So just a quick reminder, when you're at Caravan in Des Four Vents and you do want something to eat, there is this eatery, uh, basically just to the left hand side of the entrance as you come in, um, various seating area around, um, and offers a, you know, a reasonable menu, there's salad, roasted chicken, pizzas, burgers, those sorts of stuff, reasonably well priced, um, but yeah, we're going to have a snack out here tonight. If you are here for a few days, the site does have uh, quite a nice little pool. Uh, there's a nice pool area through there, as you can see. Uh, there's also a volleyball court, uh, there's patank courts or balls, whatever you want to call it, over there. And then in these sheds, you've got table tennis, um, table football, all those sorts of things. So we're just on our way into uh, Disneyland. As we said to you last night, we kind of made a decision last minute that we were going to come and we were going to motor up a little bit and come into uh, to Disneyland. Now, we bought a ticket. We bought a one day pass for one of the parks. And I don't know whether you know, but you've got the two parks here. So you've kind of got Disneyland Paris, which is the traditional magical um, place. And then you've also got Walt Disney Studios. Now, as most of you know, we did the Magic Kingdom, that sort of stuff, all last year. So we said, all right, let's do the Walt Disney Studios this time. But we're now a little bit concerned. We've got a bit of dilemma whether actually it's... I'm sure it's going to be all right, but whether actually it's going to be suitable for Darcy May with her being seven. Um, Claire saw something on the internet that basically said, um, you know, Walt Disney Studios is for teenagers and adults. Yes, I understand there's more thrilling rides and that sort of thing. So I think what we're probably going to try and do is maybe upgrade our passes to the two parks and go into the Walt Disney Studios first thing, have a look round and then move across. Go on, Claire, what you said? Um, the caravan neighbours said that they'd been and there was a lot of rides that their five-year-old couldn't go on because it wasn't tall enough. Yeah, so... so um, there's some height restrictions on the rise. There's a lot possibly Darcy uh, May went on to go on. And we don't, we, we're not coming to a place like this for the thrill rides, that sort of stuff. Yes, we don't mind going on the slower rides and that sort of stuff, but it's more for the experience and the magical thing. So we're, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there and we'll see <laughs> if we can upgrade our tickets or we'll just say, right, we're not going to do the studios. We are going to go into the Magic Kingdom. And I saw... Go on, carry on, it's on. And I saw the castles and you look, did. look 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 here we yeah. are here's the entrance So we're literally just on our way in now. This is the security uh, area as we go through. What I'm not going to do is have hours and hours of footage of us in Disneyland uh, for you. You can do that anyway. You can see plenty of that on YouTube, but we'll put snippets in there.
This is it, and this is just one of the side routes out, or the side routes on Main Street. This is the mass exodus, as everybody has to leave the park. It's huge, crazy. And what's the time in a minute, Claire? So it's 11.30 at the moment, so we arrived at the park at half eight this morning, and it's 11.30 and we're leaving now. I don't suppose it isn't surprising at all. As you're walking out, you're coming all the way out, all the shops are still open. Um, so they obviously want your very last euro out of you. So it's the morning after our day at Disney. Um, and it's the day we head up to Libiana CC. So we need to get on the road shortly. Um, I think we got back about quarter to one last night and probably it was just gone one by the time we're all into bed. So a little bit jaded, a little bit tired, uh, but yeah, we're hitting the road and we're heading home. So one of the things um, Decibel Vents has in the mornings, um, I'm not sure what time, it's quite early, is this kind of shop bakery. Uh, it's an old van that's set up here, but does sell quite a range of produce. Uh, certainly fresh bread, but looks like you need to sort of get in there early. But yeah, if you need your fresh croissants, fresh pan of or uh, fresh baguettes early in the morning, this is the place to get it from. We've just left um, Desville Vents. I mean, it really is a great site. I mean, we can highly recommend it. Huge pitches, really, really warm welcome. Definitely, if you're going to be in the area, whether you want to use it for um, going to and from Euro Disney, it literally is only 20, 25 minutes ride. Um, or if you want to explore the area, the Paris area, this region around Paris, 
Um, there are great transport links not too far from the site, straight into the centre of Paris. So really, really is an ideal stop. And I'll put a link to it down below. So we're now off to our final stop before we head over to France. Head over to France, I wish we were. Head back to the UK. We've got a ferry tomorrow morning. Um, I think it's about 20 past 11. So we're off to Libyana CC, and you would have seen uh, Libyana CC in the first vlog we did on our way down, and if you watched the vlogs from last year. So again, really great site, really convenient for um, Calais, Euro Tunnel, ferries, all that sort of stuff. So we're heading along there now. One strange thing I just realised. So I've got into the car. I've programmed in for Libyana CC. Um, just looked at the settings on the sat nav and through this whole trip in France I've had it set to the shortest route um, so it calculates the shortest route and not the fastest route uh, hence the reason why I guess we've been probably on and off the auto routes quite a lot but you know what it's been really good We've really enjoyed it. I think we've enjoyed driving through some of the more rural areas. We weren't too rushed, we weren't too busy. So yeah, anyway, we'll come back to you in a bit. So we're just slightly north of Paris and we are going past Charles de Gaulle Airport. Um, I didn't realise how big or how busy the airport is. I don't know really whether you're going to be able to capture much on the uh, on the cameras, but we'll see if we can see anything. I'll keep them running for the moment. We've certainly had several uh, aeroplanes kind of taking off, but yeah, I know Heathrow was busy, but this does seem busy. We're going to drive underneath the runway any moment now. Yeah, literally these, as we're coming up to now, are the runways. Runways and taxiways, yeah. yeah. The aeroplanes would normally be going over the top of those. Oh my God. I think the first one, his first one, is probably just a normal roadway. But these here, these are the taxiways. So this is a taxiway we're just going underneath. And I think this is another taxiway. And then oh, we kind of get on get onto the runways here yeah, it is a shame and this is one of the main runways yeah this is a runway definitely we're going underneath here's another runway we're going underneath too late now Claire I think we missed it and that's it so we've literally just gone underneath the main runways at Charles de Gaulle Airport um, it is a shame that there uh, wasn't anything for us to see oh there's one just coming in yeah flipping Nora there's one at the right hand side just coming in which is sort of tacting over us or landing over the top of us but hey ho it is what it is Good morning. Well, it's our last morning in France. We're here at Le Bien CC and we are literally just kind of packing up, uh, ready to head off. Nice big pitch again. Um, you know, pretty good pitches here. It rained last night, uh, but it's a nicer morning, definitely. Uh, got my jeans on. I'm expecting the weather probably to get a bit colder as we get back to the UK, but who knows, maybe. We'll bring the sun with us. So we're going to finish packing up and we'll get on our way. we've arrived with plenty of time and I have to say arriving at the port today was an absolute breeze um, we literally have just kind of flowed in uh, no problem at all 
all the checks were very very quick and easy uh, the French did want to look inside the caravan and the boot of the car which they did no problem at all but compared to other times turning up to Cali it has been an absolute dream So just very quickly while we're on the Irish Ferries boat again, this is obviously a different boat, slightly different this time, very, very different layout. Um, we're in the club class lounge, which is open to all passengers today. So the girls have got themselves a seat at the front there. It's not all very, very nice. So we're well on our way home now. Um, gosh, and have things changed with the roads? Uh, we're literally just coming up to the Dartford crossing, um, and traffic has certainly just changed from the French traffic. Um, it's just chaos. It wasn't too bad coming out of Dover, and to be fair, the crossing was really, really good. Really pleased with the crossing. It's quite a small ferry, um, but as you can see from the short clip, we got some really nice, kind of comfy seats at the front of the boat there, and just sat and chilled for the hour and a half. And uh, you know, the boat was clean. It was a steady crossing. It was everything else. It was really, really good. So we really enjoyed that crossing. I think we're all sad to be back in the UK. Um, back to work for me tomorrow, and uh, school and everything else for the girls in a few weeks' time. Continue so, on eight yeah, um, literally, we're just going. Oh, whoa, this is crazy! People are pulling out on your left, right, and center. Um, we are literally just going to go under the Dartford crossing anytime now. So, the overall driving's been pretty good. Um, obviously, shared with Claire as well, which has helped. I think by the time we finally get home, we'd have done something like 2,250 miles. Um, so, good old trek there and back. The only kind of downside is we've been averaging 18.7 miles to the gallon on the whole trip. Um, some days we did get up to sort of 20, other days we kind of got a little bit below, but yeah, it's 18.7 miles per gallon is the average for the full 2,200 miles now. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of third install, the journey home. Um, or the journey north of our trip to France 2023. We've certainly had a great time. We've really, really enjoyed it. Um, particularly the last minute decision to do Disney again on the way back. So I think Darcy May certainly enjoyed that. Um, I think she had a good time. Sorry, I'm having to keep an eye on the traffic. It's all very much stop and start. So yeah, so we'll bring this one to an end. Um, please give us a thumbs up, comment below. Uh, you know, oh, definitely all the thumbs up help. 
um, helps with the algorithms on the channel, that sort of stuff. So all it leaves for me to say is, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, and you'll get notified when we put out more videos. Uh, and we've got a stack in the can. I've just got to get around to kind of editing them and putting them together and all sorts of things. So hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the next one.